Everybody, how are we doing today? Amanusis on Twitch, welcome in. 2D Fighters on YouTube, classic, welcome in as well. Wonderful to see all of you here today on what is going to be a portentous day, a red letter day, a frabjous day, because today we're going to be working on our game jam, getting stuff ready for Monday for the official launch of the game jam. We can start talking about the sponsors for the Game Jam now, which is very exciting. We're going to talk about the rules of the Game Jam. We're going to be building on that itch page. And then I'm going to be learning Godot, as you can see over there. Look, it's not Game Maker. It's Godot. We're going to be learning a new engine. And I'm really excited about this. I really wanted to do Godot as the next engine that uh, we tackled. Because I love being really, the, the idea of being very proficient in an open source software that, you know, a boardroom is not going to be in control over. That's very enticing to me. We are going to be learning all the other engines as well. Well, not all the other engines. There's a lot of them. But we're going to be learning the major ones. We're going to be learning Unity and we're going to be lear learning Unreal as well. So we're going to be doing Unreal after Godot and then we'll move to Unity. And then we'll have experience building things in four different engines. Uh, to give me a much more well-rounded understanding of them, what they do, what they don't do, uh, what are their unique strengths, so that when I am trying to build projects in the future and helping these cohorts in the future, we'll be able to pick the right tool with some amount of actual understanding. Instead of trying to build a physics-based collision-heavy platformer in Game Maker, which is just not the smartest thing to do when you're not a really good programmer. So, um... Uh, I see you've made a switch to Godot. Not, well, kind of, kind of. We're, we're still going to be building things in Game Maker, and we're still going to be building Rescue. Those have not necessarily been shelved. But we are using this game jam as an opportunity to learn Godot. Godot is rad, says Amanusis. I have heard so many good things about it. And I've heard that they have really, really taken off... Um really taken off for a lot of people after Unity had their kind of misstep that a ton of funding went into Godot. Um, so from what I understand, it's still not quite there for like full professional indie studios, but um, it is very, very close. And I'm really excited to dig in. Uh, Jack, victory, good <laughs> Um, Ariel, so what's the news about the game jam? Maybe I'll join if I have the time. We're going to talk about that today. I'm a person and this is good dough. It's true, Foolbox. Amanusis open source makes the world go around. I, I uh, genuinely agree. I, I full heartedly agree. Um, capitalism is great until it becomes unfettered capitalism. And that's when I um, struggle with it from a moral basis. So when there's, when there's no uh, moral or ethical, um, you know, training wheels on that sucker, that's when I get nervous. And I've been burned by it many times, unfortunately. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know if I've ever actually uh, said this, but I have been through three different layoffs uh, at both little startups and really big, uh, like, global, multinational, sort of massive B2B companies. So, you know, it's just, it's something that you can't really avoid in today's economy, unfortunately. And that's when I think we're in the wrong space. So, we're going to be learning some Godot here today. Hold on while I kind of fix this overlay. We're going to be doing a little tutorial here. Whoops. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Uh, look at you getting serious, says Foolbox. <laughs> Sonic Colors was made in Godot. I had no idea, 2D Fighter. Thank you for letting me know. What am I going to try and make in Godot? We're going to make a Game Jam game, Jack. We're going to make a game for the Game Jam. Amanusis, geez, rough, yeah, it, it is, whoa, Marius works, hello, welcome in, everyone, thanks for joining us, uh, I'm excited to have you all here, so for those of you who are joining, we are doing some game jam prep today, we're going to be starting up our Fox Hollow game jam on Monday, it's going to be uh, skill based, so it's going to be all around um, helping all of us grow as developers, less about, you know, who's the most Mimi or who's just a professional game dev who can crank something out that's really good. So uh, we're going to be working on that today, getting the itch page all ready. We're learning Godot over here. So very excited about that. Welcome on in. Marius, how was your stream? How are things going over there? And I've got a lunch delivery. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Thank you so much. There's a... a The server crashed? My goodness. What but my skills? <laughs> um, have I released the theme? Asked Jack. No, we haven't released a theme yet. We're going to talk about the theme on Monday. Uh, I'm very excited about that. What we have talked about it, though, is that it's going to be a human-computer design uh, interaction principle related. So, for example, if we're going to do, you know, not saying this is what it is, but if we're going to do something like Miller's Law then the theme could be something, you know, like short-term memory or something. It's going to be about, you know, making sure you have the appropriate number of elements on the screen. Um, so uh, it's, it's going to be based around that. We're going to have critique sessions so that you can improve your game. We're going to have all sorts of different categories. We have a company sponsor, which I can talk about now, which I'm very excited about. Uh, we're being sponsored by River Wolf Games, who has fronted the $100 grand prize for this uh, game Jam. So it's enough for you to be able to put your game up on Steam if you want to continue the development on it. That's our grand prize. We have other prizes for other subcategories as well. We're going to have categories for um, most growth over the Game Jam. We're going to have categories for best implementation of the HCI design principle. We're going to have categories for um, most anti-implementation of the design principle. All sorts of fun stuff. We'll talk about all that on Monday. Um... Yeah, no, we're, we're doing really well, Marius. Thank you for asking. And uh, I, I hope you're doing well. I hope that the, the server stuff gets worked out. This is why I, I don't think I'm ever going to build anything multiplayer. Because it just sounds like a mess. My goodness. You're a braver soul than I am to be diving into that. Uh, 2D Fighter, is a genre decided or does that not matter? It doesn't matter. So it's going to be genre independent. It's going to be engine independent. You can build it in, in, in uh, you know, paint if you want. Heck, you could do... Do it in, in PowerPoint. You can do a board game in, in Excel or something. Uh, don't really care. What we care about is, are we designing things in an intentional way? So that's what we're going to be exciting about. Uh, River Wolf Games, that's Fortune. It is Fortune's favorite. Yes, it is. Uh, friends of the channel will recognize. Oh, hi. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> my... Oh, my poor wife is, is begging for food. Okay. Yes, please. Eat, eat all that you want. Um, so, uh, yeah. Fortune's favorite uh, and his studio, River Wolf Games, that uh, he has started up along with a friend of his. Um, they participated in the Pirate Software Game Jam. They made Pigeon Coup. Uh, friends of myself and Amanusis' channel will recognize that because we interviewed them. That's how we became acquainted with them. 
So we interviewed them about Pigeon Coup and what that whole jam experience was and everything. It's very exciting. So um, there's going to be good times. Come hang out. If you don't want to participate in a game jam, it's going to be nine days long. Three days of building followed by a critique session three times. Uh, so uh, definitely, definitely, definitely uh, come check out. It's going to be very low key. It's not going to be... Um, you know, totally based around polish. Whoever has the most polish wins. We're not going to be worrying about that too much. There will be a category for most polish, uh, but um, you know, it's it's more about skill development than it is about making a commercial product, right? Uh, so definitely come, hang out, grow with everyone else. It's going to be a good time. Two uh, D Fighter Game Maker Rollback. I'll check out after the Metroidvania Jam to see if I can turn the current project into a multiplayer to see if Game Maker Built in Rollback is worth anything. Wow, that's exciting! I did see that Game Maker had built in Rollback netcode, um, which may as well just be arcane runes on the side of a witch's hut, uh, as as far as I'm concerned. Other than I know, oh yeah, Rollback netcode is the good one, right? <laughs> I I can't wait to hear Two D Fighter. I can't wait to hear how that all goes. Marius Works, gonna eat some food, starve and catch a later, man. No worries. Thank you so much for jumping in. You go enjoy that food, my friend. My goodness. Okay. So, to start off with, we're gonna be learning Godot. And then as soon as I see um, Memphis Macaron, Macaroon, Macaron, I can't remember which one it is, because they're different. They're different desserts, and I will fight you if you say otherwise. Um, as soon as I see them in the chat, we're gonna jump into a critique, uh, critique analysis play show off of their game that they have built uh and then uh if there's any time left over at the end of the stream we're going to do some itch page building so with that being said let's go through and start learning some good oh i've got a tutorial loaded up here from someone that i have heard good things about um heart beast and uh, i'm looking forward to this uh a fighting game with no rollback means it dies at birth yeah yeah i have heard that Jack, are you going to be allowing, like, texture packs and asset packs? Because if not, I might win biggest lack of polish for a game that will be mostly colored squares. That is something that I'm I'm still kind of deciding on. I want to get the community's thoughts on it because I definitely have thoughts um, for a skill-based challenge. Um, what I really want to do is say you only get to use the stuff that you produce yourself. Um... Or have everyone have a level playing field. Because I know there was a lot of drama around the Pirate Software Game Jam where the winner kind of had like dozens of asset packs and that was, you know, understandably upsetting for a lot of people. I, I can definitely get where people were coming from. I'd like to, in the future, probably not right now, but in the future, provide asset packs for people to use and then everyone has an even playing field. Like, this is the sound library you can use. This is the asset pack that you can use. Uh, or you can create your own stuff. Or maybe even don't create your own stuff. You can only use these building blocks. You know, these are things I'd like to play around with in future jams. Yeah. Um, I only use five different colors, though. Black, white, blue, red, and green. <laughs> Colored squares is my aesthetic. Love it. Foolbox, thank you so much. I will almost certainly be uh, be honking like a goose. Thank you so much. Uh, 2D Fighter, I learned Game Maker from Heartbeast. He's the one behind the hack and slash tutorial. That's probably why I have it in my head. Great. Thank you, 2D Fighters, because I, I did watch some of that tutorial. He's the reason I'm coding in Game Maker. Very nice, very nice. Um, a lot of my projects have not gotten past monochrome colors. Well, you know, neither did inside, so there you go. In fact, my wife, Illustrator, she loves monochromatic color schemes. So, there you go. Foolbox, you're banned. You're instant banned. No one, no one can ever say green isn't a creative color in here. You're all banned. Go away. Shutting the stream down. <laughs> I got kids, man. I can't give them nightmares this early. Goodness, they're just barely starting to sleep a little bit better. <laughs> I like dichromaticism. Dichromaticism. Two different kinds of coloring. Okay, I could have guessed that from the the name. Uh, yeah, so you have two main color uh, palettes there. Sure. Get them ready for the real world. 
Oh, shoot. You guys are awful. Okay. So I did open this up last night. I opened up the Godot editor last night, and I loaded up this 2D platformer starter. Whoa. Whoa. What is happening, Godot? You just completely changed the size and ruined my overlay. <laughs> Great. Okay. So let me resize this. Do, 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 do. There we go. So I did play around with, in this a little bit, got slightly familiar with things. There is a lot that I'm like, yeah, okay, no, this is just magic. Sure, I, I don't know what any of these words mean. But figured out how to like get into the editor, which I need to make a new window capture for. Um, go to play. And capture method. There we go. So we can you know, go through all this. I found out how to kind of like edit a little bit of the code here and there. Um, took a look at how some things are structured, but more or less, I know nothing. I'm seeing t tweens referenced a lot, and I know Foolbox has yelled at me about tweens a lot. So I'm looking forward to understanding what that all is. This is a fun bug. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, we're gonna start diving in here. We're gonna, we're gonna learn. It's gonna be great. Um, hold on. Gotta bring this. Behind here. Huh. OBS is confused. That's strange. Ah. There we go. Put that down, then the sparkers. Where are the sparkers? There we go. There we go. Got it. Easy game. Okay. Woo! Hey, Hadao! Hello! Welcome in! Good to see ya! Emma News, uh, tweens are also good. Yeah, tweens are great. Excuse me. Gotta have that cubic. <laughs> Mothman Centaur, hello! Welcome in! Tween cheat sheet. This is my tween cheat sheet. Yes, I saw you post this on Discord the other day. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. Curves are drawn with Godot Engine 4.1. So are these just, like, Bezier curves for motion design? Is that... Kind of a thought. Bookmark it. I'll, all right. Bookmarked. It's done. I bookmarked it. It's there. <laughs> Curves for anything. But when, okay. See, this is, this is when I, what I need to learn. When do you need Bezier curves if not for, like, motion or, I mean, I guess you could do it for, like, spawn rates and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. I guess that makes sense. What are the equations? I don't know. Tweeting is just how something gets from point A to point B. So they're Bezier curves. They're Bezier curves. Why are we calling them tweeting? They're transitions between zero and one. Very useful for transitioning things and smoothing. It's like when you use nodes in animation, I guess. Okay. I don't like Game Maker anymore. I'm broken up with Game Maker. Godot is my new best friend now. No, no, no. It, it, it's, it's, it's nothing like that. It's that we're getting ready for the Game Jam on Monday. And as a part of this Game Jam, I want to learn Godot. So it's not that Game, game Maker is going away from the channel. It's not that we're not continuing to build Rescue. But I do need to learn these engines. I need to learn Godot. I need to learn Unity. I need to learn Unreal. And if I then have a solid understanding of these four different engines and what they are and are not good at, then that will help me to pick projects more appropriately so that if we are building something in a lower scope or we want something in a lower scope, I'll be able to tell more effectively, oh, yeah, let's go for this engine. Let's go for that engine. That'll be easier to build in this sort of a project. Yeah. Good. Don't learn any other engines. <laughs> I'd love to hear more about this upcoming game jam, says Captain Onessa. Sure. Uh, Onosa. Onosa. Not Onessa. Onosa. Um... Yeah, let's let's talk about about a little bit about that. I mean, uses though, really quick. Bezier curves are a specific way to smooth edges in lines. Tweens allow a lot of mathematical control over how things get from point A to point. Hey, Nemphis Macaroon, there you are, Macaroon, not Macaron, Macaroon. Okay, the coconut one. Got it. Oh. Uh, a lot of mathematical control over how things get from A to B. Can't do elastic with Bezier. Yes, you can. What do you mean? Like like a bounce? Like have an object move past something and kind of bounce back? You can absolutely do that with a Bezier curve. Okay. Here's the extra hat. There we go. 
All right. Memphis Macaroon. I made a promise at the beginning of this stream that we would play your game as soon as I saw your name in chat. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to play that game. Okay, hold on. Hold on. We're going to do this. We're going to make it happen. We're going to do it live. Here we go. Here we go. Loading it up. Run game. Although this looks weird. That shouldn't be. Where's Chrome? Okay, that's capturing the right thing. OBS, what are you doing? Turn the webcam on. Okay, great. Webcam reset. Got to fix it. No need to spend more than a few minutes on it. Cool. I'm excited. I'm going to spend as much time as I want, and you can't stop me. <laughs> um, where's, where's Chrome here? Here we go. Cam? This is very strange. What is happening here? It's like it's stuck on the old... Jeez. Oh, No, that's my dashboard. <laughs> Here we go. There we go. Yeah, just uh, OBS needed to get reset, I guess. My goodness. And then scale and scale. Cool. I'm excited. I'm excited about this. Uh, I'm a nuisance. I can link a cool GDC talk that goes deep into the math, but the equations mainly iterate on parabolic curves. Sure, the higher the number, the steeper the curve. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Uh, try the game also to see if it happens to me too. Yeah, very cool. Okay, so I want everyone to notice the very first thing that someone said about this game, Jack. Oh dang, this game has a lot of polish. Tower defense, sick. This is prime aesthetic usability effect in action, right? We, had, we know nothing about this game other than what we are observing of the interface. And people are already saying this has a lot of polish, right? So take your lessons, build your polish. It will make people think your game is better than it may actually be. I don't know if it is or not, but we're going to find out. Okay. Um, I'm teaching one last workshop in Unity tomorrow, then I don't have to touch it again. <laughs> uh, Ariel, hey, I know that asset pack. Nice. Uh, Nympus Macaroon, just want to point out that the art is free on itch, and it's not a tower defense, but an idle game. Yeah. So, pay attention to how people, to, how people react to products, right? People see this, and they think, wow, it has a lot of polish. Honestly, I thought the same thing. When I saw the screenshot on Cricket's Discord, I was like, whoa. This looks awesome. And then it became, you know, oh, it's, it's actually all free. It's, it's not a whole lot. Like, it's still really cool. It's super rad. Can I drop the link to the itch page? Absolutely. Let me put that in chat real quick. Oh, Nephis Macaroon, you got it. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and refresh here. We're going to start new. Under development may look different from each time you play. More information? Okay. Oh, built in Godot. Coincidental. Nested. <laughs> okay. So let's check this out. So we have our idol. We have our FPS. Gold mine coming soon. Tap to reload. Sure. Is this going to shoot? Is this what our tower defense type idea is? We have a combat log. Oh, this is the enemy. Oh, I thought this was us. I thought like we were trying to stop people from getting to us. Okay, okay. So we can like equip our adventurers. When a main hand cooldown hits zero, a soldier will spawn with that weapon. Oh, okay. So this isn't necessarily equipping them. This is like buying spawn rate. Tap on an item scroll to fast forward time. Okay. I can't really read all that stuff. Um, so let's what, increase our spawn rate here, and then off hands? A soldier will take any available off hands or armors upon spawning. So is this like we build up a pool of things, and uh, then that gets depleted as things spawn in? 
So the game jam is tower defense, SK Hidao? No, the game jam is not tower defense. This is unrelated to the game jam. This is a, a commitment I made to Nemphis Macaroon that I was going to play his game on the stream. So we're, we're going through it right now. Um, the, the game jam will not be restricted to any sort of genre or engine. It's going to be based around growth, skill sets, and HCI design principles. Yeah. Tapping scrolls, fast forward time. I don't know what scrolls I'm supposed to tap in order to fast forward time. A soldier will never run alone. When enough soldiers have spawned, typo, they will run together. Combat. Party does damage. Enemy does damage. Repeat. Okay, so we attack first, then they attack. If enemy or troop dies, combat ends. Dead enemy gives loot. Okay? What loot do they give? Loot on kill. Money? Is that what they give? Money? Does the game have to be available on all platforms, though? It only has to be available for me to actually play it. That's the only restriction. So it could be in Excel if you want it to be. Um, so there you go. The loot is gold. Got it. Okay. Thank you, Nephis. Um, close. Okay. And tap to reload. So is this just going to continually shoot at him at a fixed rate? Okay. Cool. So it's a, it's a dungeon delving idle game. And we have our gold per minute there. Ooh, that was a nice little... Nice. Nice transition on that gold spawn. Um, okay, so, so the way to unlock this is to buy it. That's a little confusing. So we can get some swords. And then we need a lot more money. How do I speed things up? I, I keep it seeing that it says tap on scrolls. Tap on an item scroll to fast forward time. For that spawning. Okay. Okay. So I can really jam this in. Okay. The minus 5% is a little hard for me to, like, grok and conceptualize. I feel like just, like, a speed up and then showing what it would be would be better. Custom Sauce Boss. Hello. Welcome in. Thank you so much for the raid. Uh, 10% of damage is converted to gold as well. Good to know. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, 5% is worth more on items that take longer to make. Yeah, I know that makes perfect sense. Uh, welcome on in Custom Sauce. Boss, thank you for being here. We're talking, uh, Game Jam. We're gonna be starting a Game Jam on Monday. We're getting prep work done for that. I'm learning Godot, uh, from scratch. And we're playing a viewer's game right now and, and, uh, doing a little analysis and critique on it. That's our schedule for today. Thank you so much for joining us. How is your stream, Custom Sauce Boss? What are you up to today? So if I buy now this shield, it's an offhand. Am I going to start seeing, like, people with, uh, okay, yeah, pitchfork and shield. Okay, cool. So what happens if I buy a dagger, too, then? This is really interesting. I, I really like this concept. I'm not going to lie. I don't know what these stars are for, though. Uh. And obviously, you know, getting some, like, sound in here would do a lot. Some music would really help carry this forward. But I like this as an idea of, like, build your own adventurer squad to go out dungeon delving. That's pretty cool. Uh, it was good making a newbie's guide to D&D website using React.js. Got some good work done. That sounds awesome. Very cool. Are you doing 5th uh, Ed or um, taking advantage of the, the OSR debacle that they uh, kind of got backed into there? <laughs> What does troop health affect? I'm assuming it makes it so that you can last longer fighting. So you can do more turns dealing damage, right? Boy, I really want a lot more money, though. <laughs> this, this spikes pretty quick, up to 5,000. That's pretty rough. And then does this increase my cooldown, or does it just increase stats? Uh, each 20 levels on an item increases a star, which makes each new level worth more. Okay, got it. That makes sense. Perfect. Thank you. I'd love to have some way to, like, visualize that somehow. 5e, yeah. Could only do basic rules. Got it. Cool, cool. Well, that's awesome, Custom Sauce. That's really cool. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a big D&D &D fan. Uh, my, my dad, 
uh, went to a religious university and was one of the original uh, D&D club members back in the 70s. This was back when people thought D&D was Satan worship. So, you know, you can imagine this clandestine group of nerds hiding in the tunnels underneath the university playing D&D, trying to convince everyone that it's not actually worshiping Satan in a, wor- in a university dedicated to <laughs> uh, Christianity. Uh, I, it's a good time. That's great. I love, I love that. For instance, a pitch par- pitchfork with one star increases in power by two instead of one each level. Okay, got it. A sword would be four instead of two. Okay, cool. So it's kind of uh, quadratic in that regard then? I'm trying to figure out, like, what's the fastest route forward? How do I get money most quickly? And, like, maybe... Yeah, so I'm seeing now that we have a countdown timer, and that that countdown timer gets sped up when I click on it, but that tooltip floating by that really satisfying minus five percent is covering the number so i don't get to like feel that i'm speeding it up very much uh, ariel on youtube i love D, but my god finding a good party that doesn't dissolve is so hard <laughs> oh shoot uh nephis macro increase hp by one percent will always give one more round oh okay well that's good to know so there we go we got that upgrade um and then what? Let's get some more health. And then it would be good to know. Oh, they have 10 attack and we have 45. So yeah, we, okay, cool. Got it. Um, let's level up our sword. Get that beefed up. We're at 42 damage now. Does he really have, like, I don't know why we're seeing two different numbers here. Is it 4.81 out of 5.81? Because if so, I don't know that I need this, like, maximum number. Because we have the visual representation on the health bar. So, like, I don't think that extra number is doing anything other than confusing me. You figured out earlier is that HP increases the amount of rounds you survive. Which makes you deal more damage, which yields more gold. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. I feel like my gold per minute has gone down. It used to be, like, at 400 or so. I'm not totally sure why that would have gone down, given that I've, like, upgraded a bunch. Okay. Let's see, would it be worth exploring, like, leveling up the pitchforks? Because they'll level up faster and we can get that star going. Your gold per minute is also affected by the archer, which gives you 25 gold per... Oh, right, the archer. I forgot about that. Yeah, easy to miss this guy, because he blends in so well with the rest. Okay. Uh, let's try and get to level 20. Oh, uh, we don't have enough money. My goodness. So I can see this being a very cute little fantasy RPG um, idol. I like it. I like the fact that you're like building your own minions. It kind of reminds me of Necrosmith. I was just watching a video of that earlier today. Uh, you would suggest clicking the shields instead, really, just to get the extra health and more rounds. I could see that. Oh, dear. Let's get the shields out. I love that concept. And so the way that I, I found Nemphis Macaroon was uh, they were asking for thoughts on mechanics to bring into this grass area down here to kind of make the game more active. And... I'm not going to lie. If it were me, I wouldn't worry about that space. I would focus on this. This is, like, where the real game is for me. Of Like, what cool combos can I make? Especially if we can start synergizing things, like getting wizards and tanks and building a party and, like, building parties to send out. Like, that would be way more interesting to me, just me, than having to close this and do something down here, which isn't even related to the, like, killing of the monster. That's just my two cents. I would I would triple down on on this space. Okay, I do think we've uh, increased our uh, gold per minute quite substantially here, because a lot of the fun of this sort of an experience is the ownership. Right, we talk about ownership a lot in in this stream as a vital vector for game design. You need to feel that what you're doing is 
unique to you and that you own this. It's why Farmville was so big. It's why linear story-based games are not as common anymore because you don't feel like you own anything there. Open world games build in a lot of feeling of ownership. So being able to have that feeling of ownership over um, my squads that I'm building and finding the right optimizations for that, getting that empowerment feeling, really cool. Bevan Valour, that's why I'm building my custom game engine. I'll never finish. <laughs> Very, very cool. Let's uh, get our crossbow back up. I think we'll do maybe one more monster kill on here, and then we'll dive back into Godot. Yeah, I'm not reading this combat log just at all. Like, at all. Oh, guy. Got my son with me here as well today. Yeah, upgrading these kind of feels not that great because you don't seem to gain money in as quadratic of a manner as you do incur costs, right? Oh, Kai. Oh, I know, I know. Come here, come here. Okay. Yeah, like, it seems like costs go up way higher than my income does. And if I'm doing this, it, it's an incremental game, but it doesn't feel like an idle game to me. It feels like an active incremental game. So I want to be active. I don't want to have to set it down and come back to it, you know? Because if we're going to be building team comps and building parties and everything, then I need to be present. I need to be making sure that the right things are getting set up. Uh, I don't know about the combat log. It's just fun for me to have it there. Sure, yeah. And, you know, it may just be debug or whatever. It makes sense. This guy, New Zealand, hello! How are you? I am doing very well, thank you. We're checking out this viewer's game. This is Nephis Macaroons, incremental that they made. Uh, and we're, we're checking it out and talking about kind of how we're experiencing it and uh, doing game design analysis, UI analysis, all that fun stuff we normally do. Welcome on in. We're going to be talking Game Jam that we're going to be starting on Monday soon. And then after that, uh, and then as well, we're going to be learning Godot. We're going to be learning how to build in Godot. So those, that's what we're going to be planning on today. Uh, Nephis Macaroon, your GPM would increase more if you spend some gold on upgrades, like Archer Gold. Okay. And this is my big problem in games like this. Oh, times four. Wow. Is I, it's, I, I struggle to know where is my money most valuable, right? And a lot of the times it kind of feels like um, just level up the lowest value thing. And I think that there's different kinds of incremental games, right? There's games that do that where just buying the thing you have the least amount of is the best route forward. And then there's others where, like, you need to really strategize and uh, synergize what you spend on. Also, every time the screen goes red, I apologize. That's my mouse. It has, like, a triple-click feature. But uh, when I use it, sometimes it freaks out and puts the mouse cursor way off screen and then it acts like it's clicking and dragging. So that's that's what that is. Uh, I'm okay, thank you. Good to hear you're doing well. How's the family? Family's doing well. I got the sun right here. You only woke up twice last night. <gasps> we may be getting to a point where we can sleep at night. Ooh, that'll be so exciting. <laughs> Jack, my only issue is that I can't see my troops dying. Yeah, I agree. Like, it would be great to have them stop here and fight, right? Uh, so I don't quite understand how my gold is being produced or how I should spend my updates properly. I think that's a very, very fair point. Uh, dude, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really great. It's the sort of manic, hysterical joy that only parents can ever really understand. Okay, we're, we're seeing our gold per minute starting to skyrocket here. This is good. This is good. I really want to get to a star. 18, boy. Stars are expensive. That's what the combat log is for, basically. So you can figure out that HP is crucial at first. Interesting. Yeah, it's just, it's so hard to parse visually. Like, just reading that is rough. I, I don't quite, I mean, there's, there's contrast issues where it's really, really rough contrast with that black outline on that green uh, background. 
and then uh, it's all caps. It's in that pixelated font, so lots of harsh edges. It's just a visually very difficult space. So if the typography, once again, we talk about typography all the time on this channel. Guys, it's the most fundamental way you communicate with your players. Focus on your typography. Um, that uh, this could be a lot more visually um, parsable, right? Okay, let's get our star. Blamo, we got a star. Oh, we got a visual upgrade. That's nice. I like that. See, that visual upgrade, now I want to upgrade everything to the maximum star amount. That That is, like, now my goal. I want to see the fully upgraded version of everything. I want villagers with apocalyptic pitchforks, pitchforks rushing down these monsters. I could work more on the combat log messages. Each star has its own color. I just saw that. Yeah. Freaking cool. That's great. That is super great. Oops. Level that up. Go back to our upgrades. Um, HP multiplier, sure. Damage multiplier, that sounds good. We should be able to get that here in just a sec. There we go. All right. Armor? 5k. 25. 100k. Woo! The combat log needs to be explained. Like, what does E dot attack mean? Oh, HP divided by E dot attack. Interesting. See, I thought these were individual, like, entries. But now that I see this is different from these two, maybe they're not, like, sequential. Maybe it's like this troop had this result. That's interesting. Where did you get the assets? Did you make the masks, Amanusis? This is an asset pack. Uh, Macaroon, would you mind linking the asset pack if you if you have it handy? E attack would be enemy attack. Okay, okay. Interesting, interesting. Oh, we have five thousand monies. Oh, let's get some bows. And I think this is going to be strong. We're already at forty five. This is already the strongest damaging thing we have, and I think it's going to speed up spawn rates a lot, right? Now, can you have a bow and a shield? That's something I don't necessarily, like, instantly assume. Yes, okay, you can. All right, so now I, I have the understanding. Main hand is just main hand, and offhand is just offhand. Ne'er the twain shall meet. There are not two-handed weapons in this game. Thank you so much, Nephis Macaroon. Thank you for, for linking that. Tap up our tower. Yeah, this is cool. I think we're kind of hitting the uh, the upper barrier of the content in it, which is understandable because I believe you said this is only a couple weeks worth of, of effort. But this is cool. Like I said, we, we uh, saw a lot in the aesthetic usability effect here with first impressions, right? Very cool thing to observe. And then uh, I think there's a lot of neat stuff in here. This is an incremental game I'd play, and I would love it if it were less idle and more active. Genuinely, I think there's a space for that in here. Granted, it may not line up with what you're doing, but if you don't build it, I might. Because this seems rad. Very cool. You could have bow and dagger to get a lot of attack power. Okay. One week of development. Not even two. Just one week of development. My goodness. That's a lot more than I have to show for my game. That's for sure. Very, very, very cool. Yeah, Nevis Macaroon, thank you so much for showing this to us. Thank you for sharing. Man, super duper rad. That is gold for glory. We're going to throw that link in chat again for Twitch and YouTube. Thank you so much for hanging out and experiencing that with us. That was a lot of fun. Let's get back to Godot. Let's see here. We're going to bring this in. Blah, 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 blah. There we go. Okay. Uh, upgrades need balancing a bit. There's a 1% gold increase, which is half the cost of the 2x gold increase. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So let's dive in. We're going to follow a uh, Heartbeast tutorial here in Godot on how to build a platformer. And we'll just we'll just start learning. I'm going to close this project. Oh man, I don't like that about Godot. Not a big fan of that. How it's uh <laughs> kicking me out of my screen size every time. Resize. There we go. All right. Check this out. You are. My name is Ben, and welcome to this Godot tutorial slash code along series. This is a beginner series 
for people who are at least somewhat familiar with programming but absolute beginners to Godot. And I expect this series to last about four to five videos and I'll be making those videos over the course of the next week or potentially two weeks depending on how my schedule goes. We're going to be using the Kenny Pixel Platformer assets so this will be a pixel art platformer game and I uh, just want to give a huge, out, huge shout out to Kenny and their wonderful assets. You can check out their website at kennyey.ml and uh, yeah they've got tons of great assets on here a lot of them public domain great stuff so you'll click the download button here and that should download them onto your computer I've already downloaded them and extracted out the files so we're inside of Kenny pixel platformer and we can go into the tile map folder right here now we're going to be using this characters packed and tiles packed uh, tile maps here. So let's uh, minimize this and open up Godot. Now Godot is a open source, completely free game engine. You can download it at godotengine.org. And we're going to, yours won't have these other projects here. These are uh, projects that I've made. And we're going to just do click new project here. Okay. New project. New projects. Here we go. This is only a year ago, and you can see the UI is already different. So I am going to make this project real quick. Um, there we go. New folder. Okay go I have made the new no, wait hold on there we go okay um, so renderer forward plus mobile or compatibility we'll use forward plus I guess version control metadata git yes great oh we go full screen automatically great thanks ghetto never mind that maybe I had my screen size the way that I wanted it for reasons. All right. Am I on 4.2? Yes, I am on 4.2. Uh, thanks for playing my game. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing it. That was a blast. And I got a lot of cool ideas and I saw a lot of cool things. I think it was helpful for everyone. Thank you so much for being willing to share. Make sure the tutorial is for version 4 plus as well. Well, it's from a year ago. I don't, I don't know what version it's supposed to be for. Let's see here. Let's do a quick search. Uh, oof. YouTube. Godot Platformer Tutorial Version 4. Okay. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. Ten months ago. Whenever you are. My name is Ben, and welcome to this... <laughs> Same person, ten months ago, two months later. Tutorial video. In this video I believe he's using Godot 3. There's some noticeable differences. Okay, cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. What you'll have by the end of this video is a character that can move around, has some animations, and can handle slope movement and jumping and everything that goes into a basic platformer. Also, I want to say that by the end of this video, or at the end of this video, I will have a special announcement. So you'll want to stick around to find out what that is. Let's get started. Open up this okay. tab right here. We're making a 2D game. We're going to add a new node. Oh, okay. So this is new. 2D, 3D, script asset library. We've got these different tabs up top. Don't really look like tabs to me, but now I understand. So we've got 2D... Um, I'm assuming this is kind of a 1920 by 1080 screen width room space. So zero zero starting in the upper left. I'm assuming. Right here, and we're gonna call this world. Hold on. <laughs> Already falling behind. Add a new node. A new node. What? What button did you right push? Here. We're making a 2D game. We're gonna add a new node. 2D scene, okay. World. 
Uh, it depends on what you have your screen size set I set as, but likely yes. Okay. Oops, right there, and we're gonna call this world, and save this scene, and save. Now you can technically run your game, and Godot is going to ask you what your uh, default scene, the first scene that the game runs is, and we are we're gonna set this to world. So we'll do select current, which is the current scene, and now our game is running. We're going to come into the project and come into the project settings. Now inside of here, we need to set up, uh, we need to do some setup for our game because it's a pixel art game. So the first thing we're going to look for is uh, filtering. And you can see under rendering and textures, we have default texture filter, and it's set to linear by default. But because we're doing a pixel art game, we're going to set this to nearest. And that will um, remove any fuzziness around our pixels, and they'll be nice and sharp. Wow. Uh, I'm glad I'm hearing that from this guy, because I would have never dived into that. <laughs> Can I up the volume a bit? Absolutely. Control plus adds a new note if you want a keyboard shortcut. Thank you, Amanusis. Appreciate that. Okay. The next thing we need to do is come H into... How's that for vo volume? To our display and window settings. We're gonna set the size of our viewport to 320 and the height of the viewport to 180. And that's just going to be a much smaller screen size, but Wait. it's- Oh, 320 by 180, that's itty bitty. 320 by 180, okay. Still 16 by nine. Once we've done that, we want to set the stretch mode to canvas, but um, we haven't, that will stretch, that will make sure that the game gets stretched up, but we haven't set uh, the window size because um, this is just the viewport width and height. So we need to be able to set the size of the window on the screen. You can see if we run our game right now, it's just going to be this tiny little window. We want to scale it up. So inside of the project settings, we need to turn on advanced settings for this. Unfortunately, We weren't in advanced settings before? I don't know if you saw what some of those settings were, but those were pretty friggin' advanced. My goodness. Uh, there are settings on individual nodes for linear versus nearest. It's just easier to set the default. My goodness. He's going a lot of settings without really explaining them. Yeah. You'll understand more if you play around with them. Sure, okay. Fortunately, I think it should be under the basic settings. And the window width override and the window height override will set to 1280 by one or by 720. Then we can close and run our game again. Okay. And here we go. We've got... Uh, Hold on. That's not working for me. Where's my... Uh... Uh, this one. There we go. That's what I'm seeing. There we go. Got it. So we got uh, a setting incorrect... Well, height should be 720, right? There we go. Now it's working. Oh, come on. Are we going to have to do this every single time? There we go. Oh, man. I hope I don't have to reset that every single time I want to display that. Our window is scaled back up to be much larger, but the window inside of the game is still quite small. And why are we doing that? Why don't we just build in the resolution we actually want to produce in? Why are we putting it in this super small scale and then trying to scale it up? Is this like mobile first responsive design type sort of idea? I'm, I'm not totally sure why we're doing this. Now, to make a platformer, there are two different kinds of bodies in Godot that you're going to be using. Because you're working with pixel art. I mean, like, I understand that you need to scale things correctly, but you can do that at other resolutions, right? Like, why are we starting at 320? The first one is called a stack. He's making a small scale resolution, then scaling in so that the pixel art is large. Godot has different settings to make lower quality assets look better, depending on different things. Okay. Okay. Static body, and that's used for the platforms that your character uh, moves on and jumps on. And 
The next one is called a character body. Now there's some other bodies, but we're not gonna get into those in this tutorial video. Uh, the static body, again, is for the platforms that your character jumps on, and the character body is for the character. So we're gonna start by turning on grid snapping right here, this button, and on our world, we're gonna add a new static body, like this. On our world, we're gonna, by turning on grid snapping right here, this button. So I've got it like about as small as you see it on the stream, that's about how small it is for me, so I need to figure out which button he's actually clicking. Grid snapping, is it this guy? Yes. Aha. Uh, on default settings, pixel art will have a noticeable blur. Okay. All right, hold on. Little guy, I think you may be sleepy. All right, let's try that out. And on our world, we're gonna add a new static body, what, like this. Wait, whoa, hold on. What, what did you and just I'll do there? Add a new grid snapping right here. This yeah. Button. And on our world, yeah. we're gonna add a new. Oh, hit the plus icon. Okay. If you want to get rid of that blur, just open project settings and search filter. Then in the default texture filter, choose nearest. Boom, you're done. Okay. I think we did that at the beginning, right? That's the add node screen. Perfect. That was the reason he's doing default size just to fix that blur. That's really weird. I think he's doing both. I think he's doing both that filter and the, the size. Static body. Static body. And I think this is what I was hoping Game Maker was going to have. And it didn't. <laughs> like this. And now adding a static body um, adds that node to our scene tree here. So inside of Godot, you have different nodes, and each node okay. has kind of a job. And so the, the job for this node is to handle a static body. But we've got an error message here saying there's a configuration warning. Well, that's because this node has no shape. So our static body needs to have a collision shape attached to it. Otherwise, uh, it won't know how to interact with other bodies. It won't know when it's colliding, essentially. So we're gonna add, as a child of this, we're gonna add, so make sure this is selected, hit the plus button. We're gonna find a collision shape. Now there's collision polygons and collision mm. shapes. Okay. A lot of the time collision shapes are sufficient, but for this video, I'm gonna use a collision polygon. And that's because uh, it'll make it easier to create a level, um, kind of like a test level, really quickly using this. Now, when the collision polygon is selected, we have these new options up here. You can see we've got this one right here for adding, creating points, this one for editing points, and this one for deleting points. We're gonna click Add Points, and then I'm just gonna start clicking inside of this room to create some points, and I'm gonna do uh, some that are slanted like this. Let's see. Yeah, you're getting a little little well, intense here, Mr. Beast. There. It's like a s city skyline. But not that, Mr. Beast. Almost. There we go. And then we want to come back around and finish the shape. Whoa, what are all those colors? Are, th are, those, are those the polygons that make up the shape? Interesting. Oh, we got ads. We'll be right back.
All right, welcome back. Um, if you want a live lesson in Godot, I can jump on with you sometime. This engine is where the bulk of my experiences lie. That'd be super cool. I would love that, Amanusis. Ariel on YouTube. So what does he do? What he is doing right now is just making a polygonal collision for the map. But if you're working with tile sets, which for platformers is going to be most of the time, you're better off learning tile maps and how to use them. Okay, very cool. Now I'm going to click edit points because I want to adjust some of these. Uh, so let's let's move the this down these down just a bit and. I'll move these up so they're much higher, clear up the screen like that. And that's probably going to be good enough. Now we'll save. If we run the game again, uh, we can't see it in the room, and that's because these collision shapes are actually invisible. Um, your character's collision shapes, you don't want them to be visible. But if we come up here into the debug settings, we can turn on visible collision shapes. And then when we run the game, the shapes are visible inside of the room. Nice and colorful as well. However, there's, uh, we're gonna do this a little bit differently. Uh, we're gonna come into my project, come into debug, and with visible collision shapes, we'll turn that off. Now on our collision shape here, as a child, we'll add another node, and this one will just be a polygon 2D. Now a polygon 2D is just a visual representation of some polygon. You can see it can have a color, it can have textures, uh, it can be anti-alias if you want. Now we could go over and we could draw along our collision shape here to create a visual polygon, uh, but we don't need to do that. We can actually use some code to do that for us. So we're gonna attach a script to our world node here. We'll click on world and we'll attach a script. Okay, world, and then inside of here, uh, we need to get access to our Polygon 2D and our Collision Polygon 2D. And to get access to these nodes, Godot uses an onReady keyword um, and then stores those nodes inside of a variable. So you could do on uh, onReady var poly Okay, so he deleted all this stuff. We're doing, is that dollar sign onReady? No, at at symbol on ready. Okay. And is that different from underscore ready? Dollar sign on ready var. Okay. Polygon 2D equals, and then Godot has a shortcut for getting okay. access to it, which is a dollar sign, and then Polygon, whoops. Oh, yeah, that was right. Polygon 2D. Now you can see the whole path out here. You can see we have static body and the collision polygon okay. 2D. Uh, you can also drag the node from the tree into the code while holding control. Oh, so you can just like drag and drop. Oh, that's rad. That's very rad. Cool. At on ready var node name equals node path. Cool. Thank you. Oh, little one. You're having a tough time right now, huh? Are you wanting to learn Godot too? On ready refers to initializing the variable before the code runs. Okay. So if we were to liken that to Game Maker, that would be the like create step, right? Okay. We're not actually getting, we're getting access. If you hold control, it does the on ready stuff too. Oh, um, hold in control while dragging it in. Very cool. To the collision polygon. So we'd have to do another forward slash and then polygon 2D like this. But typing this out every time is kind of a pain. Instead in Godot, you can actually click on it and then press hold down and then press control and hold down there you go. and drag it over. There you and go. it'll just do that for you. So click. Then hold down control, drag it over. Now we have access to both our uh, collision polygon 2D node and nice. our polygon 2D okay. node. You could also right click and copy node path. That's good. Okay. All right. So he's basically doing the same thing, but for the next one. Okay. 
Okay, so we're accessing, so when both of these are ready, when our polygon and the collision is ready, although that looks like I'm getting errors now. Collision. There we go, is that gonna fix the error? There we go, yeah. Uh, you need to watch yourself sometime with the on ready stuff because children nodes are always ready before parent nodes. Oh, that's backwards. So you need to think about that in your logic. Okay. Can be confusing. You can use at export if you want something to always be accessible. Okay, like making it a global type sort of variable. Exporting variables is my favorite. Ariel, I believe actually at on ready and underscore ready are similar in that they run after the node enters the node tree, but the difference is a scope. At on ready has a whole class and script level scope, meaning it is considered defined everywhere in that script. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Now at the start of the game, in our ready function, so this function right here is called right when this node is ready. So the very start of the game. We can set the polygon. Can I say that not having semicolons at the end of each line is freaking me out? I've never coded in a language where that like allows for that, and I don't like it. This is unacceptable. Uh, in underscore ready, it only has function level scope and is considered defined and usable on lines that only come after it in the same function. Okay, that makes sense. There's no way you're absorbing all of this right now, says Foolbox. Hey, I am a sponge. Do you see this hat on my head? I'm getting cephalopod smarts. <laughs> Since it's parent-child relationship, the children need to be ready first because they are the pieces that make up the parent. But aren't they going to be inheriting stuff from the parent? How do you inherit something from something that doesn't exist yet? That doesn't make sense to me. Mothman Sentai. Oh, I uh, threw my back out right before the stream. So thank you for making me bend down and grab things. Appreciate you. <laughs> All right. Um... Wait till you, you can add some if you don't like it. Okay, see the rest of Python. <laughs> uh, Ariel, that code will give an error. Okay. It'll still work. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't be sorry. Don't be sorry at all. Cool. All right, let's keep going. Um for this polygon 2D. So we can say polygon 2D dot polygons is equal to collision polygon 2D dot polygon. Okay, so we're just setting them equal and to I each don't other. Know why this one's polygons and this one's polygon. But when we run the game, uh, no, I was wrong. They should both be polygon. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So what that does is it takes the shape of our collision polygon 2d and assigns okay. it to the visual so let's try that out so we've got our function which has these parentheses which are the parameters that we would accept in that function and then a colon and then no way to say that this function is empty or, or is done i don't like this this is like walking on an invisible on the on the invisible bridges in dark souls you know in seeth's cave like, i don't i don't i don't like this I'm, i need i need to see the ground where am i going um, okay, so polygon 2D equals collision polygon 2D, oops, but we're also doing dot um, polygon, okay, dot polygon, just add a semicolon for your sanity. <laughs> Uh, Emily says, children don't necessarily inherit from parents. The code relationship is different from the node relationship. Okay. Yeah, I guess I need to, like, conceptualize what a node is then. You can use the pass keyword for empty functions. Oh, my goodness. All right. Hey, look at that. Oh, geez. This is just not going to want to work every single time, is it? I'm going to have to turn it off and on again every time. Maybe, or maybe it was just extra stuff I don't need. Okay, all right. Cool, there we go. Uh, and then if I go to uh, remove the collision shapes, 
Let's try it again. Hey, look at that. Oh, no. Any streamers that work in Godot, any way to, like, have that preview show up every time without having to reset it in OBS? Because <laughs> right now I have to reset the source every single time. Okay. Cool. We're making progress. Are you doing game capture in OBS? I think it's window capture. Does it need to be game capture? I mean, window capture worked fine for Game Maker. Okay, so this is some pretty this is some pretty uh, good stuff already. You're learning how to get access to nodes inside of code, and then we can um, set properties on those. No trying to get access to nodes inside of code. Does that mean with code? Is that what he's trying to say? Like you're using code to access the attributes in the node, and I'm assuming a node is essentially just like an object, right? With with attributes and, and children objects and stuff. I use screen craft capture. It's kind of weird because it's multiple windows, but one process. Yeah. I worry about screen capture because I worry about, like, doxing myself or something. <laughs> nodes or get properties on those nodes. And we've easily set up this little platformer. Okay. Now we need a character that is going to be inside of this world. We're going to need our character body. Now we could add it right here to the world like we've done with our static body, but for our character, uh, we're, we may want to put this character inside of multiple different levels or multiple different scenes. So hey, oh, Tom Illman, how's it going? We're learning Godot. Welcome in. Good to see ya. Because of that, it makes sense to make it its own scene. So come up here, and with this little plus button, we can click Add New Scene. Okay, hold on. What and was that? Here, but because of that, it makes sight of multiple different levels or multiple different scenes. But because of that, it makes sense to make it its own scene. So come up here. Okay, so a scene is maybe a room, but it also contains the nodes, which are like objects. So you make a scene for like each character and thing you're going to be reusing. Can you pull scenes into other scenes? These are all questions that I'm having. And with this little plus button, we can click. Tom Millman, thank you so much for the resubscription. Appreciate you. Thank you for your commitment and support to the channel. It means the world. Thank you. Basically, everything is a scene. Yes to basically all of it. <laughs> okay. Add new scene. And if we come into... Uh, our 2D scene here. We can do other node and then we can search. Other node. Search for character body 2D. Character body 2D. And we have our create. character body. And it's giving us a warning as well. It Everything is a node, scene, room, etc. Game objects are scenes. Scenes are scenes. Prefabs are packed scenes. <laughs> All right. I need to spend some time to like understand the conceptual hierarchy of Godot, apparently, because this, this, this don't make no sense. It needs a shape. So we're going to add a new collision shape. Like this. And we'll do a rectangle like this. And for now, I'll just set it using snap like that. Okay, but there's no visual representation of this character. Uh, so what we can do is click on our character body, and then add a new sprite. Now this sprite node, sprite2d node, as a child of our character body, can be the visual representation of it. So we can drag over the Godot icon, which is massive. By the uh, okay, we've got, okay, so this is where we can start bringing in our sprites. Okay. Um, okay. You'll get around to it. We'll carve scenes into you. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay, so I'm going to bring our dog in here. If I can find him. Hold on. Where are you, dog? There we go. Dog. Uh, Bigger. Get in there. Let's bring in a platform as well. Okay. There we go. So can I like drag you in? 
to here. Aye, there we go. Look at that. I'm glad I started with Godot because I think the architecture is cool once you understand it. Okay, very cool. By the way. I, I like cool. Cool's good. I like cool. So, uh... My mom says I'm cool, so, like, it's got to be good. We'll want to scale it down so it's not so big. Okay. There we go. We're going to change this in just a second. We're not going to keep that. And we'll rename this player, and then we'll save it. Now we have our character body. And this character body... Okay, so I'm seeing that, like, his seem to be constrained within that rectangle. Mine is not. Is that something I've done incorrectly? Just a sprite? I mean, do I have to, like, drag it up? that okay it's very similar to unity they just use different words everyone uses different words we just can't possibly we can't possibly all align on the same language can we no because there's no money in that <laughs> okay uh can is saved as its own scene you can see down here we have our world.tscn and we have our player.tscn if we come into our world, we can actually grab the player and just drag and drop it into this world. Hold on, where are we, we doing that? Actually grab the player and just drag. I don't see that in my list. Oh, because it's unsaved. Um, okay. Player. There we go. I saw something move. There it is. Drag and drop to add as a child of current scene's root node. Hold, hold control when dropping to add as a child of selected node. Don't know what that means. Hold shift when dropping to add as sibling of a selected node. Also don't know what that means. What's the point of talking the same words, understanding, the same words, understanding each other? That's so 3594. <laughs> uh, shoot. Fortune's favorite. Um, we're not switching entirely to Godot, but I am learning Godot for the game jam. By the way, it has been announced... Uh, that uh, your your studio, River Wolf Studio, is the uh, sponsor, uh, the official sponsor of Fox Jam uh, number one. So thank you to Fortune's Favorite. Thank you to River Wolf Games. Uh, party, yeah! <laughs> and drop it into this world like that. If we run our game, there's our player. But it doesn't actually do anything yet, so we need to add some code. So come back to our player, and we're going to attach a script. There we go. Now by default, Godot has this character body to the basic movement template. No, really? <laughs> is this going to do what I think it is? which is just a template script that uh, gets applied to a kinematic, or not a kinematic, it's good. That's, how, that's what it was called in Gitto 3. It's going to take some getting used to. Uh, a character body. And that's fine. We can start with that. So we'll just hit create, and then it's, got, it's given us all this code right here. And we're going to go over this in just a second, but you can see if we run our game again. Don't. Don't play with my heart like this. Don't play with my heart like this. Uh, all right. Come on. Here we go. Shut up. So we've got jumping, and we've got movement. Shut up. Shut up. Game maker! Why don't you do this? Why is there no pre-built controller? Like, yeah, no, it's not exactly what I want, but you know what? It took two seconds to build. Look, I can move on slopes, and there's not some big much ado about move and collide. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and there you have it, rescue made in ten minutes. 
Oh my gosh. Fortune's favorite. More importantly, I'm looking forward to what everyone makes for the game jam. Yeah, me me too. Fortune's favorite, we need to talk about um we need to talk about theme. I need to send you a Discord message. Godot being open source even has different physics back ends. That is so cool. That is so cool. Cool. Friggin' cool. Our character. Guys, did you know how cool this is? This is so cool. I, honestly, though, I am glad I started in Game Maker. And we're still probably going to be making stuff in Game Maker, to be fair, because it does do a lot of stuff really well. But um, it taught me how to build this by hand. So now I don't have to, like, try and figure it out on my own. Like, I know how to build a controller now, more or less. You know, I can do it. So I'm grateful for that. Game Maker is cool, but Godot is very intuitive. Man, I hope so. I hope this keeps up. This, this is great. I'm really excited about this. You can move around with the arrow keys, and we can press the space key to jump. Now, the movement feels right really there. jarring. Yeah. Like it feels really yeah. bad, right? Um, How can you know if Godot doesn't do it even better? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, that's why we're doing this. I, think, I firmly believe every engine is going to be able to do its own thing, right? It's going to have certain things that are easy in it and certain things that are going to be hard in it. Um, the fact that Game Maker is still around makes me believe there has to be things that it does better and more intuitively than what other engines do. If it didn't, it wouldn't really exist as a product anymore. So, like, there has to be something in there. And that's why I'm really excited about learning all the engines, because then I'll be able to, like, identify, oh, you know what, Game Maker's really good for, like, mouse movement. Doing mouse-related things, really good in that, you know? Well, ask you. I personally thought Game Maker was easier to get up and started with a 2D game than Unity. Very interesting. I'm glad Risky Biscuit isn't here. He'd probably bare knuckle box you over that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't done anything in Unity, so uh, it very well could be. Uh, and that's because the default template is designed for um, games that are maybe a little bit larger scale. We're doing very small pixel art, so this movement feels really fast, and the character jumps really high, right? So. That's what's going on there. But we can come back and adjust some of these things. So let's set our speed to 100. Let's set our jump velocity to negative 200. Okay, jump velocity negative. So we're halving our jump velocity. Oh, that's so great. Love that we just have our variable here. It's already made. It's already being referenced. It's fantastic. <laughs> and run the game again and just see what... If I didn't see the clip, I posted a full box. You should check it out. All right, all right, all right. All right, we'll, we'll hey, embarrass full box on stream. How are you? The best mod is here. Welcome on in. Well, not the... I don't want to say that. <laughs> Why did I say that? Sorry, Fortune. <laughs> best mod. How you doing, Redstone? <laughs> hey, what up, Redstone? How are you? Oh, shoot. There you go. See what happens. Okay. Now, this is filling. Okay, jump. All right, hold on. I need to fix this problem that we have in OBS here. I'm going to add a game capture, maybe? Good dough. Preview. Capture specific window. We want God dot get go go dot the the old go dot. Okay, so if I close this and I run, will it capture? Son of a biscuit! <laughs> Why is it find window of same executable? Maybe, maybe that'll work. Dang it! Do you have a best child? I do, but I don't talk about it. Yeah, it keeps on defaulting back to the IDE. I do not have children, so I don't have any favorites. <laughs> Add a hat. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, goodness. This is the closest hat I can reach without killing my back. There we go. What's the right? There we go. Hat number four. There we go. Um, no, no. Oh no. Oh, that's that's the good pain. That's the that's the that's the good pain. Ameripon, hello, welcome in, my friend. Good to see you. 
Oh boy. Um, where am I trying? To, oh, right, right. I'm I'm trying to get the freaking game capture to actually work in OBS because right now I have to reset it every single time, and that is just that's just that's just not gonna fly. That is not gonna fly. Oh. Don't do it. Don't fall. Don't fall. Everything's fine. If you make a Godot overlay, you can join Godot overlay team. There you go. That's a good time. Um. My goodness. Now, if I close it and I run it again, are you going to capture it? Yes! Good! Good! Okay. Good. Yes. Good. Good. Let's crap that. Okay. 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 But the movement definitely is feeling a little bit better. Okay? And we can actually move on these slopes, although it kind of like jumps down this one, right? So there's a little bit of stuff going on with our slopes still. It's fine. It doesn't feel quite right. Okay. Maripon, how's development coming along? We are learning Godot, my friend. We're learning Godot because I want to build the next Game Jam game that we're starting on Monday. By the way, once again, another plug for our Game Jam, Fox Jam, itch.io page. I hope to get up by the end of the day today uh, so everyone can pre-register for it. And we're going to start on Monday. It's going to be nine days uh, based around human-computer interaction design principles. And we have prizes. Riverwolf Studios is sponsoring it. They're going to be supplying the grand prize of $100. And then we're going to have a lot of other prizes, uh, monetary surprises like $20, $25 for other categories. Um, things like most growth over the period, uh, you know, uh, best implementation of theme, all that sort of stuff. You have a Fox Hollow Game Jam? Yeah, Maripon, we do. We have a Fox Hollow Game Jam. Yeah, we're starting on Monday. Where you been? <laughs> um... So, uh, yeah, we've been really excited. Fortune's Favorite, that's right. It's been in the works for a while. I've been talking with a lot of people behind the scenes, including Fortune's Favorite, because it's your dev studio that is uh, sponsoring it. <laughs> so big thank you to Fortune's Favorite. Big thank you to River Wolf Studios. We're going to be getting overlays up for that during our ad breaks and a bot command to uh, share their itch.io page uh, every couple of minutes in the chat. So big thank you to them. Speaking of which... Mothman Centaur, you got it. It is, in fact, an otter. I didn't know that. It's a very specific otter. 
Uh, Fortune's favorite can fill us in on this. It's an otter that is native, what, to the Amazon? An otter is a wet dog, but wolves are more dangerous, so maybe a platypus? <laughs> uh, I can't tell you how excited I am about this pre-built movement script. I just... I So I took an animation class over a decade ago, and we did a little bit in Unity of just animating our models that we built. And they had a controller in it. Why did something that was over a decade ago... A basic feature not brought into Game Maker yet. Why? Oh, God. Large River Otter of South America. There you go. There you go. I think of seals as wet dogs. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, the pain. The pain is real. Okay. All right. It's fine. We're here now. Dog mermaids is a better description for seals. <laughs> Mer dogs. Okay. Now the weird thing is when I close that window, it kind of breaks. Swap hats. A meripon. Why? Wow. Yelch. All right. The back's fine. I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lay down after the stream today and uh, take it easy. Whew. All right. Here we go. So let's go over the code that we have here. So at the very start, uh, we have extends character body, and that just means that it's, um, it's inheriting all of the properties that come with a character body in Godot and all of the functions that come with it. And I'll tell you what some of those are. Then we've got this constant up here, which is the speed. And that's just a place to store the speed that the character can move at, and our jump velocity. And it's negative because in Godot, uh, y is positive going down and negative going up, so it's flipped. And that's actually pretty normal for 2D engines. Mm -hmm. As an example, Game Maker is the same. Yep. It's also negative yep. going up for y. Now for left and right, uh, speaking of which, uh, Cube is probably not. It's it's probably not in since many games aren't platformers. But for beginners, it's nice since beginner projects are usually platformers. They are usually platformers. I don't know why. It's a bad beginning project. Don't make platformers for your beginning project. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean it could be, but like even just any sort of rudimentary starting off point for anything. Even if it's just up, down, left, right, you know, it's just, it blows my mind that there's no starter. It's pretty normal for viewport stuff in general, says Foolbox. Um, X negative is left and yeah. X positive yeah. is right. So that's what you'd expect. But the Y is flipped. Now, we're, our gravity variable here, we're getting from the project settings. Uh, Maripon, where's the link for the Fox Hollow Game Jam? It's going to be going out on Discord tonight. I need to get all of the page set up and everything. I started that last night. I need to get the rules all set up and get the text all, all finalized and everything. And I'll be posting it uh, tonight. And we'll be sharing it uh, as well tomorrow on the stream. So, yeah. So you can see it has physics, 2D, default gravity. And if we come into our project settings and search gravity and then click on 2D right here, you can see our default gravity is set to 980. And then the gravity vector, which is the direction that the gravity um, mm. pushes, is Oops. by default down, although we're not using that property currently. What was that property? Hold on. Okay, what now we have this fizz property currently, is by default down. The gravity um, pushes is by default down, although we're not using uh, Okay, so gravity is directly down. So you could, if you wanted to, uh, you know, we had, um, who was it that showed off that really cool um, localized gravity prototype? Was that Jack? Or was that, gosh, I don't remember who it was. Somebody came in here and showed off a cool prototype of jumping as a square and you would like orbit around different localized gravity. It was you, okay, good. Yeah, so, like, that's what you would alter in order to amend that, right? You would say, this is now where gravity exerts from, is from this object, right? I released a safer-work version of my not-safer-work game. Yes, the numbers don't lie, not-safer-work games for the win. 
uh, I I'm I'm not surprised at all to hear that not safe for work games um pull in higher numbers. That doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, actually, yeah, I did see that you made that safe for work version, and I would love to to give that a shot sometime soon. I'm very excited about that. Uh, Jack, you could. It would just be a bit awkward. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. It's stream friendly. Perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, I, I would love to uh, give it a spin and uh, take a look. Thank you for going to that extra effort to put that out. Using that property currently. I, I mean, I am not many numbers, but I, as one number, uh, certainly appreciate it. Okay. Now we have this physics process function right here. With right here. The delta. Okay. Yep. Uh, argument passed in. Yep. Now, physics process is... You probably use an area 2D node since that provides overrides for gravity. Oh, okay. Very interesting, Cubus. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, we don't allow... Uh, Jack, sorry. We don't allow um, not safe for work links. Uh, but you can link, uh, Ameripon, you can link to your itch page, and then you'll be able to find it from the itch page, right? Is a function that is run every single physics frame of your game, which by default, if you come in... Loophole. Hey, listen, people are going to find loopholes. They're going to do whatever they need to do in order to get what, the, what they want to get. I just want to make it a, a little less accessible for, like, the miners that are on the stream. <laughs> to your private settings again and we look at uh over on youtube question mark says <laughs> which i can only imagine is a resident of innsmouth and they have come in um discovered the internet and are seeking to spread their eldritch horrors uh in any case welcome in <laughs> fps um and we look at which by default if you come in Fortune's favorite, you need to distract people with secrets to hunt for so they don't go looking for loopholes. <laughs> well, you're the secrets guy. Kazoon tight. <laughs> oh, shoot. Wow, those are some ridiculous, ridiculous numbers. Wow. Those are some scary numbers. <laughs> to your private settings again. I mean, I'm sure, like, the Not Safe for Work version was also tied to the game jam and everything, right? And so probably had an ex a bit of extra momentum and everything, but still. All right, what, 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 what setting are we modifying is, here, Mr. Beast? Uh, a function that is run every single physics frame of your game, which by default... Physics frame. ...private settings again, and we look at uh, FPS. Okay. Um, is that going to be it? Oops. We might have to actually go under physics. Okay. Physics, Where I was, great. 2D physics. No, 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 no. No? Physics 2D. Um, All okay. right. It might not be in, oh, we're already in advanced settings. So, common, here we go. Under physics, common, common. we have physics gotcha. ticks per second, which physics is ticks per default second. 60. Okay. Got so. it. Uh, definitely plan to have plenty of secrets for people to find in our games. Nice. He was, I'm happy with my recurring one to three views per day. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Every... Every second, our physics process function is going to run 60 times. Okay. Okay. And delta is going to be how long it took between each frame, which is going to be 1 60th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so delta is a measure of time. Okay. A little over a week of release, and it's at 2,528 plays. So after this next game jam, I'm going to send a full, spend a full month on a not-safe-for-work game. My goodness. Oh, goodness. Well, you know, I'm glad you're finding some success, Ameripon. You deserve it. You're, you work very hard. I think that's right. So this, this function is run every single physics frame. Now, uh, we, have some, we have some code right here that is applying our gravity. And we have a comment here that tells us that. Add the gravity, right? Um, it says, if not is on floor, velocity.y plus equals... So they use not instead of uh, exclamation mark, bang. Interesting. Gravity times delta. So if our character isn't on the floor, and this function, by the way, is on floor, this is on floor function, 
comes from our character body 2D. If you click on this, if you hold control and click on this, you can see character body 2D. Uh, it has some properties and it has some functions and one of these functions is, is on floor, okay? So how does the, that function? So that's our documentation. That's nice. It's very nice. Uh, is on wall. I don't have to build my own is on wall collision or my own is on floor collisions. Okay. Mm okay. To know when it's on the floor or not. Uh, well, if we cool box both bang and not work. Okay, cool. Good to know. Thank you. Come into our what Godot version is this? This is 4.2, I believe. Um, 4.2.1 is, is just the one that they link to on their download page. Yeah. 2D and then come over here. You can see there's a floor property here. There's a floor property. Hold on. Where are we? Character body 2D. Floor. Ah, floor. Okay. And it has uh, gotcha. some information. And there's an up direction vector right here. And you can see up is negative one in the Y. So it can tell when Wait, it's on the stop. floor. Based no, on I'm trying up. to pause you. Gall. Okay. Up direction. Got it. Okay. So, so what does up direction say? Working with 4.3.5 dev build. Gotcha. Okay. This is the version bottom right of the console, but it's covered by the overlay. Oh, yeah. Bummer. Also, weirdly enough, this space down here is not showing up on stream. It's like, there we go. Oh, that means I can extend this out further. Oh, yes, excellent. <laughs> there we go. So we can actually see that now. That's good. That's good. Gives me a little more screen real space to work with, to work with which is good. So the game jam is starting April 1st. Isn't that really soon from announcement to start? It is very soon to start with. Also, um, April 1st is maybe... Not the best time to launch something. <laughs> we might push it out. We might push it out to Thursday. Maybe we'll push it to Thursday. That way you get two weekends in. The up is negative one in the Y. The best start to a game jam. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if people have feelings about it, right? There are like a million game jams starting the first? Really? My goodness. So it can tell when it's on the floor based on this up direction. So... Since the up direction is negative in the Y, pointing up, then it knows that the down direction is Y1 here. And so it can tell when there's a collider underneath it. I'm not sure I'm following that. What, what does up direction actually do? Open documentation. I love that. I love that it just opens up in the IDE. That's great. Um, up direction. Vector pointing upwards. You determine what is a wall and what is a floor or a ceiling when calling move and slide. Defaults to vector2.up. As the vector will be normalized, it can't be equal to vector2.0. If you want all collisions to be reported as walls, consider using motion mode floating. I mean, that makes sense. I still don't understand what that is, but sure. I mean, we can set and get it. That's good. It's good to know. Um, Ludum Dare starts in 16 days. Oh my. Probably want to start before Ludum Dare. Yeah, yeah, that's probably a good call. <laughs> Press F1 for inside, in IDE doc search. Ooh, that's very nice. Thank you, Cubus. Thank you, thank you. So you're kind of orienting it with this up direction. And by default, it's just going to be what you'd expect, right? This way is up. Um, so we're just saying the negative one negative relative to this thing up upwards is up and if we want to once again do like weird gravity shenanigans then that would need to like rotate with the player or something right um but you could make a game where gravity was in reverse and, and yeah. then is on floor would check above the character because your y would be pointing down your up direction would be down okay so keep that in mind this right here Control clicking a built-in method opens the docs. Great. Yes, I uh, I only have one hand available. The other one is holding a baby. Um, so I, I, I need to look for alternatives, but that's good to know. Thank you, Cubis. Here is going to use the up direction to orient itself. Okay, so if we're, if we're not on the floor, then we're adding to a velocity property here. Right. Now, velocity is also in our character body. It's a default property here. You can see that 
current velocity vector in pixels per second used and modified during calls to move and slide. Okay, oops, I didn't want to need, I didn't mean to press that. Get back again. So we're adding to the y value of our velocity and adding to it. Can you imagine having fingers that long, Cubis? Like a foot and a half long fingers? Oh my goodness. Ugh. Meaning going down, right? Positive is down in the y. So that's what's bringing us down. That's our gravity. Add gravity. And we multiply by delta so that that motion is um, Take the perk for extra arm on your next level up. We'll just go full chaos mutations in here. We might get an extra arm. We might become uh, pe pestilent. You know, if we're going Nurgle, if we're going Zinch, we may just turn into a gibbering mass of color. That might be fun. Certainly would probably bring people in on the stream, to be fair. <laughs> Are you a ping tuber? No, I am the embodiment of all color. I'm time dependent and not frame dependent. Okay. Sundown, thank you so much for the subscription. Thank you so much for that resubscription. Hope you're feeling better, friend. I am uh, feeling like 80% good to go now. Yeah, good to see you. Good to see you, friend. I'm loving following along on everything that you're doing over there. Keep it up. You got it. Now, handling the jump. If Do I hear 40k? No, I'm not ridiculous. You hear fantasy. You hear Warhammer fantasy. <laughs> if input dot is action just pressed, UI accept, and is on floor. So if we press accept, which is the space key, by the way, hmm. and is on floor. Is that something I just need to learn? UI accept equals the space key? That's kind of weird. Ariel, personally, if I were a filthy heretic, I would not worship a particular god more for chaos undivided. <laughs> there you go. Floor, and we're on the floor. Then we set the velocity.y equal to jump velocity, which is negative 300. Yep, okay. right up there. Okay. Now, the reason we don't need to apply delta to you, this, because you know, might be. You can rebind keys if you want. So, I mean, I guess I'm just confused what accept is. Like, is that. Just a, a a keyboard like like a space, and you can put any key into that, and so they happen to have space as accept. You can edit inputs; they are just default for maneuvering UI menus. You should add a bot that posts the YouTube comments in the Twitch chat. Oh, that's a good idea, Maripod. That's a good idea. Go to Project Settings. Uh, what input map? I'm guessing. Add new action, no, okay. It is input map, advanced. Show built-in actions, ah, UI accept. Oh, enter in space. Okay, so now I have the conceptual model. This is the A button, right? This is accept. This is the, the player saying um, positive, I want to move forward in the next step of the flow. Got it, okay. Very weird I can't just reference the space bar. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I could just reference the space bar at some point, but that this way I can have it abstracted and have multiple different keys go to it, including, I'm guessing, uh, controller input. So, okay. Weird. Uh, once again, I don't know why we're not just calling it U, like UI jump or something, or action. Why are we doing accept? Hmm. You should be able to define your own input groups if you want. Okay, good. In this place, we worship Sigmar Heldenhammer. <laughs> it's better like this because you can do rebinding and such. Yeah, and I'm cool with rebinding. I think that's good. I, I like that. I just, that accept word is weird. Um, that we're referencing that by default. I, that's probably going to be one of the first things that I change whenever I build something. Is It's not accept. It's like action or jump or something. Um, you can reference a key directly, but this name has multiple keys mapped to it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Be wondering why. Oh, you know what? It is uh, top of the hour. I'm so sorry, everyone. That's gonna be it for me today. I gotta, I gotta jump. I gotta, I gotta go do dad stuff, and I gotta work on that itch.io page. Uh, this has been awesome. I love getting to do all this. I love checking out Memphis Michael Rune's game of uh, Gold for Glory. That was wonderful. I uh, loved learning Godot with everyone. Such an exciting thing. I think, uh, I think I'm gonna be liking Godot a lot. <laughs> I think this is really good. <laughs> I'm uh, very excited to keep learning about that. Thank you so much for hanging out, everyone. 
Um, it's just been a wonderful. Uh, thank you, Cubas. Thank you, Fortunes. Uh, thank you, Jack. Thank you, Foolbox. Uh, thank you, Jack. Thank you, Ameripon. Thank you, uh, Mothman. Uh, and everyone else who has been here who has said something that I have not mentioned. And anyone who is just lurking, thank you all. Uh, most tutorials recommend you create your own inputs, so most don't use them anyway. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, this has just been an absolute joy. We're going to raid out. Um, who should we raid out to? We've got a, a, a ton of people we could raid out to. What, what's some, someone new we could raid out to? Um, let's go to Tobuggus. Uh, Tobuggus is holding a giveaway. They're uh, giving out something. I don't know what it is. Let's go hang out with Tobuggus. They're great folks, and uh, they've been helping me out a lot with the game jam planning and everything. Um, we're gonna we're gonna dive in. We're gonna dive into Tobuggus. So with that, thank you so much, everyone. If you found the, today's uh, stream helpful, I would appreciate any like, subscribe, follow, anything that you'd like. Uh, we are a charitable organization dedicated to helping people develop the skill sets they need to enter the video game industry. So if that sounds like it's of value to you, welcome home, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye bye.